right, so welcome to our final career day session. Um, I am Emily Johnson. I am a career counselor with a career center. And before we get started, I'd like to share with everyone that today's session is being recorded. Additionally, I want you to know that closed captions are available by selecting the show captions button uh, around the bottom of your screen or wherever your Zoom controls are. If you don't see the button, you may have to make your window larger or full screen. And you can also save a transcript of our session by using the small arrow in the corner of the captions button to select view full transcript, and it will appear next to the video. You simply have to save select, I'm sorry, you have to select save transcript if you want that copy. Now, our last session today, we have Upturnships today presenting our Financial Wealth 101 session, Understanding the Job Offer. And I am so excited for everyone on this call to learn about Upturnships uh, because when I had the opportunity to learn about it, I thought, this is too good to be true. Um, and it's not, it's, it's so, it is great, but not too good to be true. Um, so we will learn a little bit about Upturnships and their internship program. Um, we will also have learn more about their professional development, um, but we're excited to offer or welcome Brisa here to share um, an example of what one of their professional development opportunities looks like with Upturnship um, and what sort of support and in Turn might get as being part of their program. So this topic of the job offer is something we get a lot of questions about in the Career Center. So I'm really happy that we have our guests here today to talk about some of those best practices. And so with that, I will pass it off to you and have you get started. Okay, great. Well, hey, hello, everyone. Thank you all for being here. So we're going to start off more into the job offers in Specific, and then we'll go into a little information session of what Upturnships is all about. Um, so to start off, just navigating job offers. So what does that look like and how will you get there? Or what's the process? Before we can get to salary, it's gonna look like you go interview for a job, hopefully you get an offer and they say, hello, um, your offer is, an example here, $45,000 salary, as in that is your total salary for the whole year, your total annual income before any deductions or benefits or taxes are removed. That's not including taxes. So salary range might also not be super public sometimes. Um, so you, they might just like, they might know internally the company they're hiring with how much they want to offer you. Um, sometimes they do post it, sometimes they don't. It's better if you know like upfront, right? But if you, if you don't know, they might just put it in the offer at first. So maybe they know, oh, we can offer anywhere between $45,000 to $2,000 for this job offer, but just we're not posting it. Um, and they will just offer you somewhere in that range. That can happen. But essentially, let's pretend you get an offer. It's at $45,000 and you're like, hmm, this isn't what I want, or I want to see if I can get more. So what you want to do is you want to do your research on salaries of comparable jobs or companies in the area. Um, so where can you do that? You can go on LinkedIn. Um, Glassdoor, you can just Google, like if you're going to be working as a healthcare professional or like a dental assistant, for example, you can look up dental assistant salaries, Minneapolis, St. Paul, or wherever you're from. Um, and it can give you an idea of where you're going to be at, of where you want to be at. If it shows you that the average is maybe 46,000 and not 45,000, maybe you can say, well, I've done my research and it looks like um, the average is 46,000. Could we make it closer to 46,000? something like that. Um, most HR professionals expect that you will ask for a higher salary. It's just part of the job hiring process. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be scared. Everybody does it. It's super normalized. It's part of the process. Um, it won't take away your offer or anything like that. Um, if this company really wants to hire you, they'll work with you or they'll be as transparent about it with you as possible. It's okay to ask, don't be afraid to ask. Um, the worst thing they can say is no, you won't get your offer rescinded or if you do ask. That's just part of you advocating for yourself and just, you know, we all have to make money, right? Um, but make sure that if you ask for a higher salary that it's a well-researched number. So again, check, um, you can say you checked the Minnesota State Department of um, Employment and they say that people who are dental assistants make $46,000 on average. Um, or I checked, I checked there and then I also checked this company or this other dental office nearby, they make $46,000 an hour too, or per year too. So I want something closer to that. Just make sure you have the numbers to back it up. Don't just ask for like $100,000 out of nowhere. Make sure you know where you're coming from and why. And again, the worst that they can say is no, and then you just keep your, the original offer. That's pretty much it. Has anybody thought about this before or negotiated a job or salary before? You can send in the chat, you can speak up if you want. 
If you haven't, you can say that too. It's kind of a scary thing to do. I know a lot of us might be scared of that you might get your offer taken away. That's not going to happen. That is not going to happen. Don't worry about that. It's a good thing to ask. And it's better to just put it out there than not. So we have something in chat. Somebody says they haven't. Yep, that's the deal that happens sometimes. Even if um, wherever you work, it doesn't have to be annual salary. It could be um, they give you an hourly wage. Wage them like, oh, we'll pay you twenty dollars an hour, and you can do your research and say, oh, people in this similar field, in this similar position, similar company, um, they get paid twenty one dollars an hour. Could I get twenty one dollars an hour? Here's my research that I've done. So you can also do it by hourly. It doesn't have to be salary, but just you know, salary is what you get annually. That is without any benefits taken out or taxes. But what the main thing you should remember is it's okay to ask for more money. The worst they can say is no. They won't, they won't say, no, you're being too greedy. We're gonna take away your offer. No, it's just part of the process. It's very expected. Don't be afraid to do it. Okay. And then, so that's just one part of it. So then another part of the job offer that somebody or a company or an organization might offer you is a 401k plan. A 401k plan is like a retirement plan. It really is a retirement plan. Um, so sometimes they are employer sponsored. Sometimes you can get them on your own, um, but usually they could be part of the job offer. So they're just retirement plans, kind of like savings accounts. You can see this picture here on the side. Um, it's up to you how much you want to start investing or saving. You can think of it as saving into your account. Um, if you start saving up $5,000 annually in this account, you kind of just grows and grows and grows. That way by the time you're okay, about to retire, you'll have anywhere from like a million dollars to, I don't know, depends on the market, right? Uh, but you'll just have a lot more money saved up. So investing in your 401k early just gives you more money as you get older. As you can see here, this if you start at 22, you'll have a million dollars when you graduate to seven. But if you start at 32, you'll have like half that. And also depends on how much you can actually invest into or save into your retirement account. You can choose to like deduct as in take away some of your percentage of your paycheck into your 401k, put that into that account automatically, or you can put it in whenever you can or whatever you want. Some, some benefits that companies will offer is they'll offer you a 401k um, plan, and then they will also match your, whatever you, you're put into your account as well. So for example, if you put aside 4% or $2,400 a year, into your 401k account, then maybe your company will say, oh, we'll match you at 4% too, or at a certain up to $2,400. And then that will just like double your, the total you have saved up for your retirement at the end of the day. How much a company will offer to, to um, match you is different, or an organization will offer you to match you is different. Some companies might not even offer to match you at all. They might just offer a retirement account and that's it. Um, so you just wanna make sure you do your research on that. But basically what you should know is that if your, com if your company offers a 401k account or plan and that if they match it, that's a pretty good deal. Obviously, the more that you can get it matched, the better. But any kind of matching, that's what you want. And so again, money you invest in your 401k will be yours even when you leave that job. So that account stays with you regardless of where you go. That's one thing that you can, another benefit that you can get. Again, some companies offer it, some don't. And if some, if they do, they might not match it. Some do. So just make sure you know what that means and what that looks like. So yeah, the point of the story is 401k plans, basically they're for your retirement. And the earlier you invest and the earlier you put money and start saving into that, the better it is for you. That's just a very overview of what 401k plans are. They can get a lot more complicated, but just for now, that's all you need to know. Any questions on that? If anybody has any questions also throughout this, feel free to send in the chat. I would just add, um, that matching, sometimes you have to stay a certain length of time in order for you to keep that match. Um, and so I have left jobs where I didn't get to keep it and others I have. So it's some of that can play into your decision of do you want to stay with a company that many years? Mm -hmm. Definitely. It, there, it's also dependent on how long you've been there. Maybe they'll say after your first year of working here, then we'll start matching. Or once you, you're, once you've been here for like two months or three months. Something like that. So it's all just dependent and each company is different. So whenever you do get an offer, just make sure you read everything carefully. Okay, so there's other types of company benefits. There's paid time off. 
sometimes called PTO. Um, it's given as like a set of days you can take for any you know reason within a range of like 10 days to 20 days total a year. Um, some companies kind of blend sick time off and paid time off together. Others have them separated out, different thing. Um, but that's something you can negotiate in your job offer too. So what will that look like? Um, they give you an offer. They say, hey, you'll get paid $45,000. Um, we're giving you a retirement account with I don't know, 2% matching. Um, and then you get 15 days of PTO a year. And then you, but you might be thinking, oh, does that count as sick time off too? Or actually, could I get more time off? Is that possible? You can just ask. It's all part of the like negotiating part. You can always ask if you want more of something. Um, that's always up to you whether you want to ask for it or not. So you can always ask. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, some companies also offer tuition reimbursement. Um, so maybe they might help you pay for your education. So if you're in, while you're working there, you want to get um, an MBA or you want to get a certain other certification. Um, or you're working in healthcare and you want to get, I don't know, a PA license or something like that, um, you can let your company know and they might be able to help you out with some of the costs. They might even pay for it for you. Um, you might have to like ask about it first, so then they might just straight up offer it to you um, for up front. So it just kind of depends to know they take into account. And then other benefits, and a really important one that you should really always look for is health insurance. Um, company sponsored health insurance plans mean that they pay some part of your total premiums to like that way you don't pay it out of pocket. Um, just healthcare every month, you have to pay a certain amount to make sure you have healthcare. Some companies, if you some companies, if you get healthcare through them, they'll pay a certain percentage for you. So if every month, for example, you have to pay $200 to have healthcare, the company might say, oh, we'll, we'll pay, I don't know, 80% of that for you. Um, so that might turn into you only pay $40 or something like that a month. Instead of paying the whole thing off by yourself, it will help you pay it off for you and with you. So that's another thing to take into account. Um, different companies offer different things. It just depends on where you end up. Some companies will pay it all for you. Some companies only pay a certain percentage. Just look into it um, and just be aware of that. But where, anywhere you go, if you're gonna be working there full time, make sure you have health insurance. Make sure that it's always an option. That's really important. Any questions? You can send them in the chat whenever you want, or you can speak up, up to you. So there's things to think about, and we'll kind of do a little activity real quick. Um, so we talked about all the things that could potentially be offered in a job offer. So this is what a job offer will actually look like. You will get a letter addressed to you, and it'll have like wherever you end up, all the fancy lettering of that company. So in this example, you get two offers from Sunrise Bank and from Target, just an example. So the way that an offer looks like is, you know, It'll have all their lettering and stuff on top, and they'll say, "Dear so and so, you know, we're offering you this position full time for um, whatever role you're going to be at at our company, and you'll be starting on whatever date." Um, and then they'll explain your salary and your benefits. Usually, it's a long letter; it could be more than one page, um, and they'll tell you all your salary and your compensation is so and so. For this example, in the Sunrise Bank, Sunrise Banks, it's sixty five. $1,250, that is salary, again, that's how much you'll be paid a year, that's not including um, taxes and other benefits. So at the end of the day, you won't actually be making $65,000, you'll get taxes taken away from that, so you'll probably be making, so you will be making less than that, but on annually, you'll be making that mine without including taxes. And then they're also, they're also saying, in this example, they're offering you a full benefits package, including healthcare, dental, vision, and life benefits. Um, and they have an optional 401k plan. So here, their 401k plan is optional. Um, you can also have, you'll also have paid time off, which includes five vacation days and six days each year. So it's only five days of paid time off that you have. Paid time off is time again that you don't have to work. So you'll have a day off, but you still get paid. Um, and then this position, they tell you more about the position specifically and how much work you'll be, work or how many hours you work a week. Um, it all just depends on the company and the position. And then they wanna make sure that you use the job description and it all sounds good to you. And then if you accept the offer, please sign below and then return the letter. This is for Sunrise Banks, so that's for them. And then for Target, you know, same thing. They're offering you the position as a financial analyst, same position in this example, and you'll be starting on September 2nd. And then they explain your salary, you'll get your compensation $62,500, a little bit more than the Sunrise Banks one. And then they offer you all the healthcare, dental, vision, and life benefits. And then we offer it. Target does offer an optional 401k plan and match the first 3% and then half a percent up to 7% total. So then here, 
did you have this example? Again, this is an example. We don't know exactly what Target or Sunrise Bank's benefits are. This is just an example. Um, but in this example here with Target, they say, we offer you a 401k plan. We'll match you 3% at first and then half up to 7%. So that's way, that's a little more than Sunrise Bank's would offer. And you get paid time off, including 10 vacation days and five, six, six days a year. So they separated that um, for you there. That's just how they work. And then more about, you know, really excited to have you. Here's your responsibilities. And if you accept the offer, you sign a return. So um, in this example, what do you all see or just reading it and looking through it, which one do you all think is a better offer? Sunrise Banks or Target? You can just send in the chat. So again, oh, we got one in the chat. Target, Target, getting some, lots of Targets. Yeah, and for those of you that said Target, can you say why? Take some time for you to cut that out. Oh. So somebody said Target because they have more PTO. Nice, okay, so I'm something that's important to you, more time off, good. They definitely do have more PTO. Um, and then it and then they also separate their vacation days and their sick days, which is good to have. Then what else do they have? They also have. Oh, go ahead, Emily. Did you want to say something? Oh, we I have in the chat better four hundred one k, and then specifically that they match three and a half percent up to seven and a half more vacation and more holiday or sick days. Yep. Yeah. So it's really good offers. And then one important thing also is that Target is offering. 250 or no, $250 more than Sunrise Banks. This is another thing. The original offer, $250, no? 62500 and then Sunrise Bank is offering 65000 Oh, I missed the five. I missed yes. the five. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Sunrise Banks might be offering more money, but um, Target is offering more PTO and more um, matching for the 401k. So in total, the target one kind of looks a little bit better, but here's what you can do. In this example, so you get both offers and they just both say, you know, if you accept the offer, please sign. They don't tell you explicitly or really, they don't say, if you want to negotiate, please let me know. They don't tell you that. So you might think, oh, maybe I can't negotiate. You can always negotiate, always, always, regardless of what they say or not, they never will say that you can negotiate really. You can always negotiate. So let's pretend you're, you're, you're this person, you got these both offers, you know, the target one looks better. You have more PTO, you have more um, matching for your 401k, but your Sunrise Bank's offer, you get more money. So how can you do that? So maybe you want, you're really excited about Target and you want, and you say, actually, we don't work at Target. So how can you make it to you get more money? So you can say to this off, to this um, hiring person, since we're hiring manager at Target, like, hello, thank you for the offer. Um, I'm really excited about the position, but I want to discuss benefits. You can always say that. And you can say, um, I actually received another offer for a similar position at a different company, and they're offering me $65,250, which is around three, three more, $3,000 more than I'm getting paid here. Um, is it possible for you all to match this position? And that's a really cool thing that you can do if you have more than one offer already. You can kind of use them against each other to make sure you get the best benefits for you. Um, so you can see that and just be honest and say, you know, I have another offer. They're offering more money. Can you match that or can you give me more? And then you just say, that's the target hiring manager. You can say, like, I'm getting paid this much more. Um, could you match that? Or could you meet that? Or could you offer me more? And then if they really want to hire you, which hopefully they do, because you're a really great candidate at this point, they'll say, actually, yes, we'll give you that much money as well. And you'll keep all the rest of your benefits. So in the end, you can make it, you can make it, you can make it work out for you really well. And then same thing with Sunrise Banks. Maybe you decide that actually Target is just too big of a company and you're really scared about the pressure or... Um, you heard that people get really stressed out working there. You don't want that environment for yourself. But you heard, heard that Sunrise Banks, it's a lot more calmer and you think you'll feel better working there. But you can say, you know, I'm happy with the salary, but actually um, I got another offer and they're giving me 10 days of vac 10 vacation days. Is it possible for me to get 10 vacation days? Um, you can kind of just ask there and just be honest and work with them and have them work with you too. Just be honest about what you want. And at the end of the day, hopefully it's all so you can get the best offer for you. Does this make sense to everybody? In your experience, are you expected to show the job offer when you do say, I did get this other job offer and this is what they're offering um, in order to have that negotiation? 
I don't think so. They generally don't ask. You can just say like, hey, I have another offer. And if, and then they might follow up and say, well, could we like see proof of it or something? And then you can send it, but don't offer it up initially. But also they could ask for it, so don't lie. <laughs> also, so yeah, but in that case, if you didn't have another offer, um, and you did get that target offer and you're thinking about getting more money, again, do your research, look into what financial analysts are making. Um, at other companies, maybe like at Walmart or Best Buy or something, um, in a big company that's like Target, that's really broad and all over the country. Maybe another company that's based in the Twin Cities or in the area wherever you're applying at, um, and then see how much they're making. And then if they're making more than 62,500, you can ask for that too and say, you know, Hey, I looked up the salary range for financial analysts at people who work at Best Buy and U.S. Bank, um, and they're making seventy thousand dollars on average. Could I get closer to seventy-five thousand dollars? Because I did my research and I know what I'm worth, kind of thing. But don't say that. Just say I did my research and I see that other companies are getting paid are paying their financial analysts more. Could I get more? And again, the bet the worst thing they can say is no. And you just kind of go from there. You will never get your offer rescinded. It's totally part of the process. And again, you can um, negotiate by hourly rate. Rate. So again, if they're offering you twenty dollars an hour and you want more, you just you reach there again, um, and you can go there as well. If you, if it happens that you look up, that you get offered like a really good offer at first, like it could happen where people, for example, this target uh, financial analyst position, maybe on average financial analysts get sixty thousand dollars. And you're actually getting paid more than you would be on average, and you're happy with that, then you don't have to negotiate if you don't want to. Or if you're happy with your, your PTO or all your benefits, you don't have to negotiate if you don't want to. If you feel comfortable with all that, that's great. But at least it's always good to at least try to get a little bit more of something because now's the time to do it. It'll be a lot harder when you're actually working there to ask for more money. It's good to do it off, like right as you get the offer. Um, yeah, but you don't have to negotiate if you don't want to. It's up to you at the end of the day. But I just really want to emphasize that it's super common and pretty much expected that if you ever get a job and they offer you something, it's okay to negotiate and ask for more. Really remember that. Great, okay. Well, again, how do you navigate a job offer? Know what you want if they offer you the job. So again, with that financial analyst position at Target, you did your research before, even before they give you an offer, you know, people make $60,000 on average. So you want at least that. And then they give you more than that. And you're like, okay, I'm happy with that. And then you always have the right to review your options. So if they tell you, you have to let us know by like the end of the day today, that might be a little bit stressful. You always have time to ask and to actually take the, ask for time and take the time to look at what is like being presented to you. And that's easy as well. You can always, when you get an offer, you can say, you know, thank you for the offer. Can I have some time to think about it? You can just say it like that. I mean, you don't have to uh, risk or like agree to the position immediately. You can ask for time to think about it. And then they'll tell you, oh yeah, you can take like two days or three days or let us know by the end of the week. Um, and they'll let you know, yeah, when you can get back to them. And again, do your research, um, talk to a friend or somebody that you trust, or just make sure that you know that this is a good offer for you and this is the best offer for you. Um, and again, there's things you can negotiate like your salary, or your hourly wage, wage, wage um, your PTO, whether you're working remotely or on a hybrid schedule, that's something else you can talk about at that time as well. And you can also talk about the hiring bonus. Um, if they offer you a salary and you, or maybe you have to move to a different part of town or to a different country or not country, a different state and you need more money to kind of get you to that state to start that job, you can ask for a hiring bonus to get more money to, just to start you off. It's another thing you can negotiate as well. But once you do accept the offer, send back, reply to either the email or you can call whoever offered to you and say like, yes, okay, I am accepting the offer or thank you for the offer. I actually want to talk about salary. Can I make more money or can I have more pay time off? Um, and let them know why. You can say, oh, because I looked up the benefits of people in some of the positions and they're getting more money or they're getting more pay time off. So I think that's, that's important to me. And then they'll work with you on that. Negotiating job offers can be stressful and it can make you really nervous. So I found that for a lot of people, it's just easier to email. You don't have to talk to anybody on the phone. It's just an email and you send it and that's it. So email might be easier for you. But again, if you're more of like, a, I need to talk on the phone to somebody, you can do that as well. And then um, whoever 
initially offered you the offer, they will review it, see if they can do it. Um, and then they'll let you know, like, oh, yep, here's the new offer, or actually, no, we can't work with you on that. This, this is the offer. They will not rescind the offer. That's no, it's not gonna happen. Never gonna happen. Don't think that if I ask for more, they're gonna take it away. That's not gonna happen. And then after all this, if you do all this, at the end, you get to decide if you want to take the offer or not. It really is up to you. So you have time. Never feel like pressure to take a job. Um, if you don't want to, make sure you do all your research for yourself and make sure that you ask for the most that you can for yourself. That's really important. Does anybody have any questions about the job offers part? No, yes, yes, no. Looks like no, but again, as we, as we keep going, you can send it in the chat and I'll just kind of stop. We can talk about it. But yeah, lots of things to think about when you get a salary offer. But again, the main thing I want to emphasize is it's okay to negotiate. Don't be afraid to negotiate. It's all just part of getting a job. <clears throat> again, so review your job offer carefully and look at all the benefits, especially with the 401k matching, if they match it and how much they match it. Um, and then ask for time to review. Do your research and ask, could I have a couple days? We'll let you know, talk to people that you trust, maybe a professor or somebody at the career center or a friend or your parents, somebody, whoever, and just make sure that you're making the right decision for yourself. And then respond back promptly to the hiring manager. So don't like wait a week to reply. Make sure you get back to them like within a day with whatever they give you. And then always the decision is yours to make. It's always up to you. Don't feel like you're forced to take anything that you don't want to take, especially from like the hiring manager side. It's always up to you. And it could be that, you know, you really want to negotiate this job offer and they tell you, actually, we can't offer you a higher salary. Then you can say, actually, I don't want to work there then. If they're not going to work with me that in that way, then I don't want to work there. Or you can say, I really don't care. I just really want to work here. I'm really excited to work here. I'll take whatever they give me. That's fine too. But again, it's just always a good idea to negotiate at least salary a bit. Cool. Okay, so now I'm gonna send this in the chat. This is if you're interested in upturnships and I'll send it again at the end. So maybe you don't need to fill it out yet. This is just like a form confirming that you came to this information session. So we're moving away from um, job offers and salary. And we're gonna go into upturnships and kind of our program. So. Upturnships is a nonprofit organization, and all we do, we're based on Twin Cities, and we just match underrepresented students to um, paid work experiences, usually internships, um, to help them, help prepare them for their first full-time job out of college. That's all we do. So for this upcoming year, um, 2023, we have two main programs that we're recruiting for right now, actually right now. Um, we have our Upstart projects, which happen in the spring and in the summer, and these are projects with employer partners, so you would not have an internship or work experience with upturnships. It would be with one of our employer partners. We have lots of different companies that we work with based out of Minnesota, and they send us all their internships and opportunities that they're looking for, and we kind of send them students to fill those positions. For example, going back to the financial analysis, um, maybe we have a like US Bank, and they come up to us and they say, we're looking for somebody who can do a project um, in financial analysis. Do you have any students there? And you would apply to upturnships. You go through our process, and then we would, once you're done, we kind of send out your information out to um, US Bank if you're interested in financial analysis, and then we kind of go from there. So I'll get more into that too. Basically, projects are capped at 40 hours in total of work. And that is 40 hours stretched out throughout the semester, the spring and the summer semesters. So that actually looks like five hours of work a week. And that's plus two hours of mandatory weekly trainings on Tuesdays from 3.30 to 5.30. And I'll show you calendars and get a better deal with what that looks like. We have opportunities in business, any kind of business generally, um, finance and accounting, marketing, graphic design, and data analysis. We also have some um, community development opportunities as well. This program is great for sophomores, but juniors and seniors are also eligible. And then this is projects. You can think of these as mini internships because you will only be working 40 hours in total over the course of about two months, which looks like five hours a week. So it's like part, part-time really. Plus projects and those happen in the spring and the summer. And then in the summer, we have our full-time internship program. 
And we have two programs for that, one in the Twin Cities, based on Twin Cities, and one based out of Duluth. Um, you have to be living in either or area, in either area to actually get an opportunity there. Um, and these internships are full-time paid hourly with our employer partners. So full-time as in 40 hours a week throughout all of the whole summer. Um, and as part of this program, we also have mandatory trainings just throughout the program, um, usually like every other Friday on a hybrid schedule, so some in-person, some remote. And the opportunities that we have here are in business, finance and accounting, marketing, data analysis, sales, human resources, supply chain, operations, and more. Basically anything in the business realm, that's what we do. And this program, our internship program is best for juniors and seniors, but sophomores are eligible as well. So these are two programs. Um, I would say if you are interested in working in like the corporate world, you're getting into the business world, but maybe you don't have like a business degree or um, you're really interested in marketing, but you only took one marketing class, that's not your major. Projects would be really good for you if you want to explore a different field or a different um, minor maybe that you have. Uh, but the internships are a lot more based on your major, but projects are a lot more flexible. So it all just depends on what you're interested in and what experience you have really. So this is what our calendars look like for our projects program. So as you can see in the spring, our program starts on February 7th. And the days in green are days and we'll have trainings again, Tuesdays from 3.30 to 5.30. And the days in gray, which are kind of a little bit hard to see, are days when you can work on your project. So again, it's five hours a week that you'll be working on your project, but that's up to you when you work those hours. So maybe you can do two hours on Monday, oops, two hours on Monday and three hours on Wednesday or one hour a day all week. Um, that's really up to you, it's pretty flexible. Projects are pretty flexible. It just depends on what you and whoever your supervisor is decide works best for the both of you. So really flexible. That's for spring. And then in summer, we have projects that start on June 6th. Same thing, trainings on Tuesdays, 3.30 to 5.30. And then you can work on your project anytime on these great days. But five hours a week, kind of max. Um, we can, depending on if you need more like class credit or something, do more hours of your internship. That's kind of flexible but you do have to come to those two hour trainings on from 3.30 to 5.30. And then our projects programs, both of these are fully virtual. So they're all online. Our training and our work experiences are all online. And then for our internship program, we um, have our Twin Cities one here that starts on May, on May 30th. The days in green again are days when you will have training and those trainings are gonna be like half in person, half online. And the days in gray here are days when we'll be working at your internship all day from like eight to five, nine to five, and you'll get paid hourly. So it goes from around late May to the to mid August. And then we also have our Duluth program, which kind of starts around the same time, late May, ends in early August, and we have trainings there. That's kind of what those programs look like. Um, so in those in our programs and the whole goal of all our programs is to make sure that the students that we hope work with are really successful when they graduate. So 80% um, of our students are employed six months after they graduate, which is really important to us. And um, the majority of them are making anywhere from $50,000 to $59,000 annual salary. Again, how much they make in a year is pretty high. And then on average, 93% um, of our students are employed in their field of study. So it's really, really important to us. What we mean by that is um, wanna make sure that you work in a job that corresponds to what you studied in school. So all of our internships are really tailored towards you getting valuable work experience that counts towards your major or whatever you're studying in school. That way when you graduate, you can get a job in your field as well. We don't want you to be studying, um, I don't know, marketing and you end up working customer service somewhere. We wanna make sure that if you study marketing, you end up in marketing or if you study, um, healthcare, you end up in healthcare, things like that. Um, and our, we have so our two programs, our projects are kind of like, really you getting the start and beginning to kind of get good professional experience to help you get to your first full-time job. Um, and then you kind of go into our flagship program where you really work on those skills a lot more. And then the goal for both of these programs is to make sure you get your first full-time job when you graduate. That's all the main goal for both these programs. Um, but you can, with us, you can do a project and then do an internship, but you can't do an internship and then a project. So you have to kind of go one into the other, which is why there's arrows there. Um, or you can do either or. And then again, the whole goal is to make sure that you get a full-time job when you graduate. Make sure you're prepared for that as much as possible. That is our whole goal. A full-time job that you're happy with and that 
corresponds to what you studied in school. So this is an example of one of our students. Um, so she did a project with us. Again, the projects are like the mini internships and um, she did really well. And then she threw us, she also got an interview for an internship, a full-time internship. Um, but in that interview, she was able to kind of turn the internship into a full-time job. And she turned that in internship into a full-time job when she graduated. So that's just one way that we can kind of help you get to your full-time job. Um, some of our students do get full-time jobs through their internships. That's just something that happens. Um, but at the end of the day, you wanna make sure that you're as prepared as possible for your first full-time job. So there's three main parts to our programs. There's the work experience, which again is your internship or the project. And you'll be working with one of our employer partners, not with internships, but one of our employer partners. Um, and then while you're working, you also will be coming to training with us, depending on the program. Again, if it's projects, it's all remote training online. If it's um, internships, it's like half online, half in person. And then in this screen, we just focus more on professional development skills. So we talk about things that we just talked about, salary negotiations um, and savings, debt, networking is a big part of our program. Um, and just you learning about your strengths as a professional that way again. So you're really prepared to get your first full-time job when you graduate. And then in the training, you also get access to our a program coach. And our program coaches are volunteers with us. Most of them are retired. They've been through their whole career and they're just giving back now. Um, and they work with our students one-on-one -on -one to help them with anything they need in terms of their internship or their career. So if maybe you're thinking about what do I do when I graduate? I'm still need to think about that more. You can work with your coach and they will help you figure it out. Or maybe you want to start at a full-time job but eventually you want to be a business owner one day. You can, some of our coaches are business owners. They can like kind of help you out and you can get a better idea of what that looks like, what the work that will take to do that. And our coach is also really great at helping you connect to their network. So um, if you know you want to work at, what's the place? Um, Target, um, our coaches might be able to help you out there. Maybe they'll be like, oh, I know somebody who works there. Or there's this person that I know that you can talk to, things like that. They help you connect with their networks and they're just really, really helpful and they love to help our students. So again, in our training, we talk about your strengths and how to find the best job for you. Um, we talk about, talk about workplace culture and what does it mean to be in your first full-time job. Um, we talk about wealth building like we just did. Um, we practice networking and we talk about resumes, interviewing, cover letters, all the kind of stuff that helps you get your first full-time job. And again, our coaches are great. They are with you from when you start and they support you with really anything you need. Um, they can help you again, build your network. So this is just an example of some of our coaches. All of them are in the business space because that's the majority of what we do, just all business really. A little bit of community development, a little bit of graphic design. Um, but they are all really great different companies around the Twin Cities area. And they just help our students again with whatever they need. And they're really great at helping them connect to their network. So these are some of our um, coaches. And this is an example of some of the companies that we work with. All of our companies are based out of Minnesota. Some, the majority of them are also bigger private companies. You might not have not have heard of some of them, um, but they're pretty impactful in the area and they just hire a lot. Um, so one of our big employer partners is BI Worldwide. They hire every summer, like 10 of our students. And then they also offer like at least three of them full-time jobs when they're done, if they're, if they're seniors. So that's just something that our employers do. That's just an example of some of the companies that we work with. So in this example, you would be getting, or in our programs, you'd be applying to upturnships, but potentially getting an opportunity to work with any of these companies. Um, and we work with these employer partners just to make sure that we match you to an opportunity that fits you the best of what we have available. That's really intentional. We wanna make sure that um, you tell us like, oh, I wanna work at a big company that um, is close by where I live and I live I don't know, in Eden Prairie. Um, we would look for our companies and see if there's any of them that, were, that are in Eden Prairie. I think Bear Worldwide is actually in Eden Prairie. Um, so then we'd be like, oh, this is a good offer for you here. Good potential opportunity. That's kind of how we work. So again, for, compared to traditional internships, opportunities works with you to make sure you have a paid experience. Not all experiences are paid. Ours is always paid. You get professional development training. We do career assessments, career assessments in those trainings. You get access to an network of alumni and peers. You get professional coaches and support staff, all just to make sure that you are having a good experience at your internship or your work experience, and that it is gonna help you get your first full-time job. So there's a process to our program and to applying to our program. You don't just apply and walk away. We help you as much as possible to make sure you have all the skills and knowledge that you need to land an internship or a job opportunity. So who should apply? We're looking for current Minnesota Superior Wisconsin-based sophomores, juniors, and seniors in college. We don't work with first years. Um, 
and we want to work with students who are seeking a professional work experience in one of our target areas. Um, like I said, business, um, marketing, a little bit of community development, that kind of thing. We're also looking for highly motivated students, students who really, really want to get an internship or work experience, and students who are marginalized in some capacity. So maybe you are part of a marginalized race, sex, socioeconomic background, you're a first generation college student, maybe you're a college student who's Pell Grant eligible. You don't have to be all these things, just one of these things is fine to kind of um, make you eligible for our programs. And this is um, our process, our application process. So we do want to attend students to attend a virtual information session. You're already in one, so you're good. And again, that's why I sent that form in the chat. I'll send it again. That just proves that you came to an information session if you do apply. Um, and then you would submit our online application. And this, I'm sending that in the chat as well. Our online application takes anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to complete. Usually takes students about 10 minutes. You'd have to submit a resume. Um, we want to make sure that it is the best version of your resume as possible. And you want to make sure you submit it with your name, so-and-so resume, just like that. Um, and then we help you, again, make sure it's your best version, the best possible version you have, and then we'll help you fix it throughout the process. So when we get your um, application, make sure you're good fit for our programs and that you are getting an opportunity, you're looking for an opportunity in one of our fields that we're offering, then you would get invited to complete an online learning module with us. Um, the online learning module is through our system called rise.com. It usually takes students like an hour, like max an hour to complete. In this module, you get more information on um, how to professionally present yourself, interview skills, and then resume skills. And again, you kind of work on your resume throughout this process. You want to make sure you're updating it as much as possible throughout this whole process. Um, and then from there, you would be invited to work with one of our interview resume coaches. You'll get an email from us saying like, hey, you've been matched with our coach. Um, they will help you with your resume. You meet with them usually virtually for about an hour or two, depending on how much work um, you want on your resume and interview skills. And then your resume should be updated to our standards and you'll see what they are once you apply. And then from there, once you finish working with your resume coach, they submit to us your final resume and then you are done with our application process. Then from there, we kind of move forward with reviewing your application and your resume. And we make sure that you, we have all the information that you know, we know who you are and what you're looking for. And then we match you to our potential opportunities. So again, if you say that you want to work in a big company somewhere close by Eden Prairie and you're looking for a marketing opportunity. Um, then we would see what do we have available that kind of matches that. And then we would say, oh, we have a really good opportunity here with BIA Worldwide. Let's ask the student if they're interested. So we would email you and ask you if you're interested in this position. You would get the job description and all the details that you need. And then you would say if you're interested, yes or no. If you are, then we would send your resume off to, this, to BIA Worldwide and they would interview you and hopefully hire you. So you wouldn't have to apply again. Um, we would just send your information on to the companies. So it's, you just apply to us once and then we kind of send you your info off. Um, so yeah, you would interview with the company if you're interested. If you're not interested, just let us know. We're not like, I'm not interested and that's fine. We'll keep sending you opportunities hopefully until we find something for you. Um, but if you are, we would send your resume off to the company and then they would give you, um, work with, they would interview you and then hopefully give you an offer letter. And if you get an offer letter for your internship, you can also negotiate there. That's a possibility. You can negotiate internship offers. Um, and then there, once you sign the final offer, then you're officially part of our programs. So until you get an offer letter, you're kind of just in our application process. So there's two different things. So with internships, you would have to interview and then go through all that process and then get the offer. And then you, once you have the offer, you're officially part of the program. But for projects, you just kind of, um, you don't have to interview at all. We match you based on your resume and then the employer would approve you based on your resume if you're a good fit for that project. Um, so projects you don't interview, internships you do interview, so many things. The, but also remember that we send all of our information out through email. So if you do apply, just kind of keep checking your email. That's where we get all of, our, all of our details and information. We might text you here and there, but email is the most important place where you get all of our information. And so just some other things to consider, our process is competitive. We can't guarantee that um, all applicants will get an opportunity. It's kind of like, you know, you apply to a job, doesn't mean you're going to get it. And it can also take students anywhere from six to eight weeks to get an offer from the time they apply up until getting an offer. That's just the way that also applying for a job works could take a long time. And But if you are really interested, applicants are more likely to get an opportunity with us if they complete the foundation training like on time. 
um, respond to emails, calls, and texts in a timely manner. So just let us know. And able to communicate when situations change. So kind of if you can no longer be part of the program or you're no longer interested, just let us know as soon as possible instead of just kind of ghosting us. Um, and then if you're open and flexible to different work opportunities within your career goals and your education, right? So if you know that you want to do marketing, but you're also interested in social media and graphic design, you can let us know all of your interests and that'll give you more opportunity rather than just if you just do social media, social media, social media. The more you're interested in, the better it is for you to get an offer with us. But again, just keep checking your emails after you apply and that's what we'll get. We'll send you all of our information. Any questions? You can send them in the chat. And then I'll send my email in the chat as well in a bit so you can all reach out to me for any questions. While you all are thinking of your questions, I hope you are seeing why I thought this is just too good to be true. That slide, uh, I think it was 25, you had uh, traditional internships on one side and then upturnships. Mm -hmm. There is so much you are offering our students. Yeah, this is the slide that you talking about. Yes, yes. Yeah. This is uh, a really exceptional opportunity. Um, and that information we got at the beginning of our time together is just really a sampling of the great mm -hmm. content in this professional development training that Upturnships offers. Yeah, definitely. So that is pretty much it for the information session. If you're interested, please apply now. Our, our, pro our positions get filled kind of on a rolling basis. So the sooner you apply, the better it is for you. I send the application in the chat again. Um, again, it takes like 10 minutes or so, 10, 20 minutes to complete. Um, and I'll send, I'll stop sharing my screen as well. And I will send my email in the chat so you all can ask any questions that you have, maybe. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Our, yeah. our application. Oh, if you're just got a question in the chat. I'm about to graduate in May of spring 2023. Can I still apply for the internship? Yeah, yeah. So we work with you. Um, ha, like the summer after your senior year. That's up to when we work with seniors. So yes, you can still apply for an internship in the summer. But if you were to if you were to graduate in May and then apply for the fall, we wouldn't work with you on that. It's right up until the last semester, the semester after you graduate, we can work with you. So I'm really hearing you say apply now, sooner mm -hmm. rather than later. Yep, yep. But you can apply um if you if you're graduating in the spring. And I'm sending my email in case you have any questions. Feel free to reach out to me there. Other questions we can answer before we wrap up today. Again, feel free to put them in the chat. Go off mute. You can use a raise hand feature. Well, then I would like us to all give a, a virtual round of applause for, for Brisa for joining us today and giving us this great information. Um, your wisdom and then just your time is such a gift to all of us. So thank you for, for joining us this evening and sharing about all of this great information. For sure, yeah. I have just thank a few much. kind of housekeeping things. Um, as part of our uh, Metro state votes campaign. I'd like to remind everyone to vote today. Our polls are open until 8 p.m. and I'm putting in the chat our search tool so you can find uh, what poll you need to go to. We also want to remind all of our students to register for classes. Um, the sooner you register, the, the better access to the classes you want uh, become available. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns about registration, make sure you check in with your advisor uh, so you can have those questions answered. And I just uh, put our registration information in the chat as well. Um, and, and lastly, as we wrap up today, I want to remind you that a lot of the things that were shared today are, are things we can help out with. So Brisa mentioned uh, making sure you have a quality resume. Um, and so uh, feel free to bring that to the Career Center. And in fact, tomorrow we're hosting our resume drop-in. This is every Wednesday from 1130 to 1. You can join us through Zoom and myself and a writing tutor will be there to help you uh, make sure you're putting your best foot forward, whether it be for an opportunity like Upturnships or one of our other um, opportunities we had spotlighted through Career Day. So I just put our Career Center link in the chat um, and new as of yesterday, we have uh, an appointment button where you can click and find all the information about how to schedule an appointment with the Career Center. 
So thank you all for joining us today. An extra thank you, Riza, for joining us um, and presenting this great information. Yeah, thank you all so much.